Welcome everyone uh, to today's um, conference call with uh, Vault and Energy Supply Developers. Uh, my name is Trevor Matthews. I'm the Managing Director of Vault Resources. And with us today, we have Jeffrey Ambrick, Chief Executive Officer of Energy Supply Developers, or ESD, and uh, Jack Pukowski, who's the Chief Financial Officer of, uh, of ESD. Unfortunately, Bob Gallion isn't. No, Bob uh, Gallion just joined, uh, Trevor. Ah. Apologies. Oh, yeah. Bob's just popped yes. on the screen, so uh, that's great. And good to see Bob um, on this uh, conference call also. So Bob's the uh, Chairman of Energy Supply Developers. Um, and uh, today's conference call is really to, uh, to hear from energy supply developers and a little bit from Bolt about our involvement in this uh, pretty unique facility. So this is all about um, bringing, you know, cell making and battery uh, manufacturing um, base back to, uh, back to the US. Um, you know, there's, there's already um, other cell makers, but I think the innovative aspect of, of what, uh, what ESD is doing is this full integrated super side approach. So the complete ecosystem of um, material supplies for the battery makers, cell makers, R&D and other things. But I'll let Jeff talk more about that. And um, at this point, yeah, I'll hand over to Jeff and, uh, and ask him to uh, just run through the ESD um, uh, proposals or presentation. Right, thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Um, let me get this full screen. There we go. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Um, let me get started. Whoops, I already went too far. <laughs> uh, as Trevor said, uh, my name is Jeff Yambrick, and I'm the founder and CEO of Energy Supply Developers, uh, ESD. Um, and I'll just jump into it uh, with the interest of time. So um, there's some, whenever somebody talks to us or asks us about what ESD is and how we got formed and whatnot, um, I like to give them a little bit of a rundown. Um, so, you know, the question is, who is ESD? And uh, ESD is a group of uh, leading industry and business executives that have come together to address the need for a complete value chain um, uh, with regards to lithium ion batteries in America. Um, what are we doing? Um, the partners of ESD have been pushing to establish lithium ion manufacturing and its complete value chain in America for the past couple of years. And soon our customers and SuperSite will play an important uh, part in making America a competitive producer of lithium ion products. Uh, so what is our focus? Um, I guess I should start off by saying one of our main focuses is obviously the automotive industry, but we also view that there's an underserved market in America. And those are industrial, commercial, defense, um, essentially non automotive customers. We all know automotive is the lion's share of uh, lithium ion products that will be produced, but there are about 20% of the total volume that's really underserved. So we're establishing the lithium ion battery um, industry in America, and that includes the entire value chain. Value chain being testing R&D, um, government facilities, um, educational, whether it be university or whatnot, so our focus is to bring all this together to support the US uh, from the perspective of manufacturing, but also what leads into the manufacturing. And I think an important part is how we are doing it. The partners and shareholders of ESD understand the importance of managing capital and our business model of building and leasing our customers' facilities to them will allow the customers to use the, their important and sometimes limited capital to invest in their business, whether it be equipment, um, manpower, technology. Um, and we would like them to do this versus sticking you know, half a billion, 100 million, whatever the case may be into a building. Um, if we want the industry in America to really take off, I would prefer that they use those that capital for actually making their businesses better. So. Just to give you an idea of what the overview of our uh, super site and value chain might look like um, is this little uh, uh, chart here, if you will. So here we are. So this is the value chain that I was talking about. Um, when you talk about um, services, facilities, um, you know, shipping, logistics, uh, facility maintenance, 
uh, compensation and benefits. And again, we're targeting um, large scale uh, customers, um, existing customers, startups, um, all the parts that are going to help make the battery industry successful in America. So some of those do include uh, smaller companies, startups that may need help with um, uh, payroll benefits, things like that. So we might have that uh, service to offer to them in a little bit longer term, but uh, not necessarily a focus, but we wanna make sure everyone's successful. Uh, testing in government, uh, private laboratories, uh, every battery, every material that's made needs to be tested. And in some cases, shipping a battery across the country or somewhere else just doesn't prove beneficial. Um, we've been talking with some of the government uh, laboratories about uh, having satellite offices and um, uh, laboratory <coughs> or their activities there, um, and then import-export compliance. Uh, we know that regardless of how badly we want 100% of the industry to be in America, we know today that there are just certain materials that aren't available in America uh, and that will have to be imported. Uh, likewise, for some of our customers, they may wanna export some of their final products or their products in general. Um, raw material processing, um, powders, formulators, foil separators, um, ALD, MLD coatings. Um, we've ha got a couple of customers that we're speaking with uh, that do some interesting uh, activities with um, materials, uh, ALD coating, powders, things like that. Um, and then obviously the lion's share that we're looking at here is the cell manufacturers, uh, system integrators, so module pack type people. And then if there's an OEM that's uh, relatively small and needs a place to build vehicles, uh, we'll build those facilities for them as well. Uh, component manufacturing, um, Volt Resources being one of them. Oops, sorry about that. There we are. Uh, Volt Resources, um, you know, anode materials, graphite, things like that. Uh, simple prefab, more complex, aluminum, steel, uh, molding, and again, that's mainly for the cells and modules and packs. Uh, equipment manufacturers, um, we know that uh, we're going to have a lot of manufacturing on site, so we want to make sure that um, our customers are taken care of quite well. So we're in the midst of talking to certain um, uh, equipment manufacturers um, and also uh, having repair services on site. It won't take care of 100% of the people. Uh, because the equipment for manufacturing and the supply base, it ranges from uh, Chinese manufacturers to American to European, et cetera. So we know that uh, it's not going to be good for everybody, but having those services on site uh, will help keep people up and running. Um, and then life cycle management, uh, recycling, reclamation, and waste management. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised how much uh, activity there is on the recycling side. I'm glad there is. But uh, given the um, small number of batteries that are out in the field, um, it's surprising to me, though, that we do have uh, a few different customers who fall into one of these categories, whether they be purely recycling, recycling and reclamation, and then just uh, scrap. So that just kind of gives a broad overview of the, um, what the super site will have on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so again, when you talk about uh, projects, you talk about activities like this, you're talking about some of the numbers. So we'll get into those in just a minute. But um, Energy Supply Developers has entered into partnership with a couple of companies, one of which is a company called Thomas Crowley uh, Developers. It's uh, TMC, um, oh, sorry, uh, T TMC, my apologies, Thomas Crowley uh, and so TMC. TCA, sorry, Thomas Crowley and Associates, uh, but they're our development partner and they'll be financing the construction of our customers' facilities. And we also have entered into a partnership with Yates Construction. Um, they'll be the ones who are building the majority of our facilities. Um, and Yates Construction has built many, many um, industrial complexes. Uh, one of their first uh, battery activities was they built the uh, Tesla facility in Nevada or the Panasonic facility for Tesla in um, uh, Nevada. So um, from a uh, company standpoint, who are we talking to? Um, we can't really go into too many names because Volt's the only one who's uh, publicly um, announced the working with energy supply developers. 
But we have uh, 12 companies that have signed LOIs, an additional uh, five companies or so that have um, shown strong interest and we're in the midst of talking to. Um, and uh, we expect to have our first groundbreaking, um, fingers crossed, by midsummer of 2022, so six months away, roughly five months away. I'm very excited about that. Um, the plan right now is to have between 12 and 15, possibly up to 20 facilities um, on site by 2028. Um, and uh, we're very excited about that. And if I move down a little bit further from the standpoint of um, some of the numbers, um, and these are preliminary numbers based on our interaction and feedback from the um, customers that we're speaking to, but we're talking anywhere between about four and 6,000 jobs that'll be created. Uh, one of our cell manufacturers that uh, we're getting very close to coming to a, um, an agreement with is looking at uh, between 12 and 1,500 people um, on their site alone. Um, the target right now is up to about 50 gigawatt hours of um, production on site or production capability. Again, ESD is building the facilities and we'll lease them back, but everybody's business is theirs to run. So when I say 50 gigawatt hour capacity, they might have that capacity, but some might only make a little bit less. Um, we have uh, a number of universities and technical colleges within a couple hour drive of the site, um, meaning that uh, new graduates uh, will be um, available uh, for these. Um, the infrastructure and the utilities uh, will be in place uh, when the facility becomes operational. Um, and again, that's um, the power necessary, water, um, all that fun stuff will be there. Um, labor force in general, in that area, um, over 50,000 uh, potential employees or uh, available labor force there. Um, and then uh, I think one of the more important or possibly interesting um, numbers is that um, the ESD site that we're targeting, and again, I apologize, I can't go into it right now because we're still in negotiations, but um, we're less than a day's drive from over 50 um, OEM facilities. Uh, that includes automotive OEMs, industrial, commercial, et cetera. Uh, so we're targeting an area that's going to be very near um, many of the end customers. Um, we're also going to be within a couple hours, likely, of the Ford uh, facility in Kentucky. Uh, so we're excited to possibly pull on some of their uh, supply chain as well. And... And then uh, that kind of wraps it up. But uh, as Trevor mentioned, and I'm happy to answer any questions, uh, Bob Gallion, who's our chairman. Uh, Bob is, I believe, I would say globally known as a battery expert. Um, we've um, appointed him as chairman. Uh, myself, Jeff Yambrick, uh, 25 plus years in the battery industry. Um, and Bob, I won't go into the number of years of your experience um, because I'll let you talk to that if you'd like, but it's a lot more than 25. Um, and then Jack Krakowski is our chief financial officer, and Jack has got a long history in finance, uh, started um, uh, automotive supply company uh, based out of China, and uh, has been working with Chinese and American companies to, and Western companies, I should say, to either work Western companies in China, Chinese companies in the Western world. So with that, uh, Trevor, I will turn it back over to you. And uh, if you have any questions for me, happy to answer them all. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Uh, that was great and really informative about you know the, the the structure behind ESD and the progress that you're making with you know towards uh, hopefully construction in about um, commencing in about six months' time. So you know that's really exciting news. So you know from um, just to explain Volt's participation and um, our plans and and the benefits that we see from being part of this development. Um, as Jeff explained, there, you know, there's quite a lot of capital tied up in, you know, developing facilities to house your, uh, you know, your processing equipment and your people inside. So, you know, this um, this development defers a lot of that capital for us. Um, we'll enter into long-term, you know, lease agreements to uh, to basically give us um, access to our, to the facility, but. Um, and obviously that's part of the financing model for, for the um, ESD development. But, uh, you know, for us, that means we just need to focus on our, um, basically our equipment supply, um, you know, the flow sheet to 
manufacture um, battery anode material and uh, and obviously the recruiting and and um, staff uh, arrangements and and we're from um, you know the location benefits providers with ready access to you know very skilled um, of skilled workforce. Um, the other benefit that we see from this is is we being the uh, battery anode supplier in this facility, you know we have an inbuilt customers um, in relation to the the cell makers that will sign up for uh, for this development. So. Um, and the, and the other benefit, of course, is supply chain. So where you're producing the equipment that is in the same location as your um, potential customer, then, you know, there's huge benefits in terms of um, inventory management. You know, we all see the issues with supply chain costs and bottlenecks in, in the current environment. So, you know, this is a, a, a development that will get around, um, you know, those particular issues. So... So yeah, a lot of benefits there. We've been working closely with our technology partners, American Energy Technology Corporation in Chicago. Um, you know, they provide all the IP that we need to develop um, our, um, our manufacturing facility in the US. We've done our flow sheet design, equipment selection. We've done the test work, um, you know, and we, uh, we, we can see that our material that we've been working on um, you know, will meet the requirements of, of cell makers. So, um, so in addition to that, we're about to start the feasibility study, um, proper engineering and, and uh, um, other aspects of, of our sort of uh, project development um, as part of the ESD development to, uh, to complete that and get that to a, a, bankable, um, a bankable level. Um, so yeah, so we're really excited about this opportunity. Um, you know, that size facility, 50 gigawatt hours could mean, you know, requirements in rough terms of about 60,000 tonnes a year of battery anode material. That alone uh, at about $8,000 US a tonne um, for coated spheronized um, purified graphite, which is the work that we've been doing with ATC. And we have that technology to manufacture that product. Um, at about eight thousand dollars a ton is is nearly five hundred million US dollars in revenue, you know, at that sort of um, planned uh, gigawatt hour um, capacity objective. So, so this is a really significant um, development just for Vault, um, let alone you know uh, the overall development that ESD is um, proceeding with. So, um, with that. Uh, I've, uh, I, th I think we'll just have a look at some of the Q&A now. Um, I don't think, not sure there's a lot of questions that have come through. Um, uh, not a lot that we probably can proceed with at this stage. Um, so I, I think we've pretty much covered it off, um, you know, in terms of questions and, and thanks, Jeff, for, um, you know, providing a pretty full sort of description of, of the, the ESD development. Um, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we look forward to more news flow as, you know, as you're able to make announcements around uh, the, the participants, the site location, and um, what, what do you think the timing around that will be, Jeff? Just more in the coming weeks or, or uh, Jack, um, near term? Yeah, sorry. Jack's been handling the website and things like that. Uh, when do you think we'll be having that up, Jack? Oh, you're on mute. Jack. Mute. Jack, sorry, you're on mute. I think in the next couple of weeks, we'll have uh, a website up that will give more information and so forth. We apologize. That it's not there now, but this is all this is all developing pretty quickly. Mm, thanks, Jack. And and sorry, Jeff. Just news flow around uh, the discussions that you're having, um, like site selection and uh, potential um, other participants in the um, ESD development, and and in particular the cell makers. They're sort of weeks away. Do you feel, or um, of that sort of timing? Uh, I. I would say within the next month, uh, month to, yeah, I'd say month. I think that was kind of the, mm -hmm. we had some discussions uh, late last week and we were told 30 days. So let's call it a month to five weeks before we be able to make any additional announcements on, on the cell suppliers. 
Mm, sure. Yeah. No, that's. Uh, I think um, you know the 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 key part of what you're doing too. There is a lot of more news flow to come as you you know move through the completion of those discussions, the site selection process with one of the states in the US and. And I think for people listening in, probably um, what's useful to understand is there's quite a, it is quite a negotiation process with sites because they are, I'm sorry, states, because they are offering a lot of incentives, I guess, because facilities like this are highly sought after, I guess, is what um, is a reasonable statement, I think, Jeff. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, 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 and again, and Trevor, you know, we are looking at a thousand acre site, so it's a, it's a fairly large site in any state. Yeah, sure. And again, we're, we're looking at both the incentive packages uh, that can be extended to our customers as well as, and I think more importantly, uh, the operating expenses. Um, we're not gonna go to a state that's gonna charge twice for energy um, than we can get someplace else simply because uh, battery manufacturing is a very uh, power hungry um, industry, uh, power heavy industry. So we want to make sure that uh, for our customers, we're giving them the not only the best incentive package, but also the best uh, possible overall operating expense package. Mm, sure. Okay. Yep. No, I think that's uh, that's uh, appreciated by all the participants um, as well. So, uh, so I think you know the uh, the time taken to to get to a landing or an agreement with a particular state and select them is is obviously an important part of the process moving forward. So, um, really appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, um, I don't think we've got any. Uh, we There's a few more questions here. here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, uh, just probably more focused around um, uh, a question to, uh, to Vault. So um, while we will be um, obviously focused on the production of spheronized or coated spheronized material for lithium ion batteries, um, we are doing work with ATC on the non-spherical component because you never get 100% yield um, of uh, graphite fed in in terms of you know the tons of um, CSPG material or battery anode material that's produced at the back end of uh, of a processing um, operation. So, so you know we we will we've been achieving seventy percent yields, which is in our test work, which is very high and helps the economics for the um, for the project and and uh, I guess you know enables us to look at competitive pricing too for our customers. But we're also been developing uh, feed or coated material that can be used in the um, alkaline battery sector. So improving the performance and lowering costs for alkaline batteries, um, particularly the scaled up versions that are more looking at, um, you know, uh, I guess more commercial stationary storage applications. So. So we have uh, um, an agreement that we'll be executing soon with uh, a joint development agreement with a company called Urban Electric Power. And then in addition to that, we also have been working with another group that will be named soon, but uh, they're in the lead acid battery um, sector. And, and again, um, working more on the expander um, in a lead acid battery. Um, and uh, so, you know, that work's progressing really well as well. And we think, so instead of producing a low value product that um, in China is basically just sell as a or byproduct as a recarburizer and maybe achieves you know around 500 US dollars a ton, we can be um, achieving really um, high prices for all of the products that we produce through our uh, processing facility by um, by coming up with or so, you know by working on and, and completing these. Uh, Test work programs and moving to off takes with uh, with these other groups that we're working with in the uh, in the byproduct area. So that's an important part of our story. And you know the ESD facility will give us the uh, opportunity to make uh, to make those byproducts as well and distribute them to uh, to other customers. Um, all right, uh, I think I think uh, that covers off the questions today and we're out at about 25 minutes so which is quite a good uh, you know quite a good sort of uh, timing for this uh, for this sort of 
um, call. So, um, uh, sorry to interrupt, Trevor. There's one question okay. from uh, Brad Boatwright asked, um, when will the site be operational? Um, so that's going to vary a little bit uh, from the standpoint of who the customer is. Uh, so cell manufacturing, it's going to be probably about a two-year window uh, from groundbreaking to manufacturing, or maybe even a little bit longer if it takes um, uh, qualifying the equipment and qualifying the product coming out of there. But uh, other companies uh, we've spoken to literally could be up and running in six months uh, because they are more of a support or part of the supply chain. So it's a... I can't give you a direct answer, but I would say if it is a pack manufacturer, you're probably looking at a year. If it's a um, material uh, supplier, maybe about a year and six months, uh, cell manufacturing a couple of years. Uh, but we have had some discussion, some discussions with equipment manufacturers that um, want to move in relatively soon. So for certain customers, it could be six months, uh, but other customers just simply based on the size of facility, uh, equipment, complexity, it could be up to a couple of years. Okay. Uh, Trevor, right. one other thing that I'd like to chime in on since I'm the only guy on the ESD, ESD side that hasn't spoken. Uh, we have two members of our board that actually, our investment group that are actually members of the new LibreAge organization that has a collaboration that's going on with uh, Europe uh, many of the role models that's going on there, plus uh, Jeff and myself, Carrie back, and along with Jack, a uh, great deal of experience from years of work in China. Um, it's very clear if you go to see any of the big battery manufacturers in China, this localization concept works and it works very well for the mere fact that gigafactories consume enormous amounts of material. And uh, if you look at the, my old alma mater, CATL, uh, in the future, they're no longer measuring things in thousands of tons. They're starting to measure in millions of tons of graphite that will be used in batteries. So one of the things that we all have to recognize, it's not just going to be one site that is going to supply or be supplied to. Jeff mentioned the uh, Glendale site in Kentucky where the big blue oval is going to be uh, in, in the US, as well as within a four to six hour drive, there's four additional battery plants from that area uh, and no more than about a day's drive to several other battery manufacturers uh, that can be supplied to from this localized uh, site. The most important thing I think, uh, Trevor, for the folks on the phone to hear is that the shipping and transportation, the logistics that Jeff was talking about are probably the, some of the finest that I've ever seen because the important thing there is not only can you import raw materials, you can export finished goods, which is a really big thing for clients that will come to this industrial park and quite honestly, for Volt resources or others. Um, another thing that to be considered is that we're bringing in some new technology. Um, on a, a regular basis, I'm working with folks like uh, Dr. Stan Whittingham, one of the Nobel laureates, working on some new technology for manufacturing validation samples, something in the 100 to 300 uh, megawatt range that will be something that we can bring to the party as ESD. So we've got at least four battery experts that are on our, our team. We've got uh, uh, at least a couple of very good businessmen like Jack, and uh, Jeff had already mentioned uh, uh, capabilities for designing and building uh, factories. So there's quite a bit of uh, talent that uh, occurs uh, in the ESD group, as well as the outreach that each of us have within our own respective areas of expertise. I just wanted to add those few uh, comments into the, the mix. Mm, great. Yeah, no, thanks, Bob. That's. Um... That's really appreciated, and I think is you know uh, you know more context for the for the people that are listening into the call. So um, um, and understanding yeah the you know the breadth of what GSD and and the people that are sitting in behind it. And I think the other comment was you know the you know the announced sort of funding partners as well as construction partners to to move this facility forward, which is you know key part um, and and of key interest I guess to you know, a lot of people on this call. 
Um, and uh, yeah, no, Vault's very excited to be part of it. Um, you know, and I really appreciate you all making the time um, in the evening, your time to be on this uh, on this call. And uh, I, uh, I'm not sure if we've got one last question. Uh, I think we're all done, which is good. <laughs> and um, answering the questions, that is. And uh, yeah, I think at this stage we'll uh, we'll we'll wrap the call up. And and thanks again for all your time. And uh, thanks to everyone that's uh, been um, listening into uh, this conference call. Okay, thanks. Thank everyone. you very much.